we've all been there. <laughs> yeah. Whoa. See, that just like, yeah, man, I feel like an outcast now. Just uh -oh. who's, who's been there and then the whole audience erupts? I love it. <laughs> okay, so I guess you guys already know them, but this is uh, Pamela and Christina. They are the owners and creators and entrepreneurs that are behind the Velveteen Rabbit, a very fun place to drink, it seems like. Boogie. Yeah. That's, okay. no, it's not yet. That's, a, that's a run through over there. Okay, we'll look for the boogie later. Okay, so uh, first off, so you guys are great entrepreneurs, but I was surprised to hear that this doesn't exactly, that you weren't born with it running through your blood. So you are lo local natives to mm -hmm. Las Vegas, but um, tell me about how you went from just being a couple people who were going to Vegas, like, you know, here in Vegas, local, to being an entrepreneur that's now got a great business. All right, well, we grew up here, so hanging out, going around Las Vegas downtown. Um, I didn't feel a huge connection to the city, and I ended up leaving. I was living in Portland, Oregon, uh, Tokyo. Um, Christina went off to San Diego, and then she was traveling to India, Nepal, and Thailand. So we got a lot of experience in other places, and that really inspired us. Yeah, and the weird thing was, so you're four years older? Or which one's older? I'm She's older. older. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you both look so young. I don't know. That. Oh, thank but, you. Uh, thank but, you. Yeah, but, but be, because you skipped college, right? No, no. Oh. Neither of us did. Oh, okay. Well, then. Uh, <laughs> no, okay. Graduate. So good graduates. <laughs> we are, we I are failed, four years I apart college, as far as so. schooling is concerned. So when she graduated from college, I was graduating from high school and we both left at that, oh, okay. that point well, in time. Oh, okay. Same yeah. time. Gotcha. Sorry. I'm the college dropout. <laughs> uh, fair enough that I right. forgot that one. So, okay. <laughs> so you went to different places. How did that change you and how did you, eventually you come to start this business? Sure. Um, I was really influenced by Portland, Oregon. There are so many independent business owners there. Um, Tokyo was really inspiring as well. Christina had a lot of inspiration living in San Diego, especially uh, with the budding beer scene there. Craft beers and craft cocktails really. Um, were amazing, like in 2006 was a huge explosion in the cities we we're living in, so that definitely contributed. Okay, so you just, you were like, there's such a need for these drinks. We should bring this back to Vegas. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, I very felt clever, like for us, like we wanted a community driven place, so we wanted great craft cocktails, craft beers, and then also a place for art and music. So yeah, okay. Christina actually came up with the idea for the bar, so. <laughs> you're, the, you're the original? Right. So you pushed her into it? Or you, yeah, you were I, like, it was, okay, a, it was a small yeah. push. She was, exactly. I was like, do you want to do this? And she was She's like, um, yes. Yeah, I do, yes. actually. Kind of like that. Okay. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about, uh, so one of the things, that a lot of the people who watch the show are sort of these like early entrepreneurs. So talk about how you went from not really thinking that you could be entrepreneurs to like the moments of serendipity that made it so you changed your mind. Sure. Um, well, it's something that was kind of on the back of my mind for a while, like opening either a restaurant or a bar, but it didn't really... Because you hate working for the man? <laughs> yeah, pretty okay, much. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, d I never wanted a gotcha. nine to five, but I didn't know exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, so actually, the, the biggest moments of serendipity, I guess you could say, were when I was traveling. So in India, Nepal, and Thailand, I, I was traveling for five months, and within that span of time, I just got more and more inspired. There was someone I met that had um, ridden mm. his bike from oh. from. <laughs> I thought London. you I thought you were going to say a bunch of money to get. Oh uh, no, so no, that's no. a good yeah okay. But that would be nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, where are those people? Um, <laughs> yeah, he was riding his bike from London to India in six months, and another girl who was shipping um, a bunch of goods from Thailand back to the states, and she was going to go to different music festivals and sell that, and I just. So you just felt like you could do it. Like you're yeah. like these people are similar to me, and exactly. they're, they're able to be entrepreneurs. And why not? You might as well try, right? And right. Or else no, you'll always true. regret that it. No, that's true. That is true. Yeah. I think that was our biggest like inspiration. Is like, like why not? Why not? Yeah, I'll, be on, I'll be on lose. my deathbed. Why not just try someday? Yeah. yeah. I think we've always been like go-getters. Like just go out and do what you want to do, and okay. you know, even if you fail, at least you tried. Right. You know. gotcha. Okay, so did you save up money yourselves or did you go raise money or like how did you actually break this barrier where you're just somebody with an idea and then it looks like it fell into place? Like talk about the people sure. and resources that were needed. Sure. Um, in the beginning, we absolutely had zero funds, so we started saving immediately. We both um, ended up living with our parents for oh, a yeah. period of time. Um, you know, saved our own money, which we s ended up saving a lot, which is great. And then we got some investors as well. Um, and then we had um, a really great moment where we ended up meeting our landlord uh, of the building. And he, you know, coincidentally wanted his building to be a bar. 
Mm. Uh, this guy. Was this purposeful? Like, did you seek him out, or was it coincidence you were just drinking and they were like, "Hey, I own this building." Well, it was someone I knew. He was in the arts district. He actually, yeah. it's Wes Miles who um, opened the arts factory. So he's been a, a mainstay in the arts district for quite a while, like over 20 years. Um, so I was actually seeking his advice, like, how do we get started? He had just opened a bar in the arts factory at that point. And uh, we kind of had a conversation, and then one thing led to another, and we realized that we were kind of looking at the same location. Oh, okay. And uh, it was or the one next door. Actually, yeah, which we were looking crazy. at the building next door, but uh, the owner of that building wasn't really like looking to really help us with TI tenant improvements. So um, in that conversation, he ended up telling us that he owned the building next door to it, gotcha. and he wanted it to be a bar. So that moment, then that moment, like, that Whoa. moment kind of clicked. <laughs> yeah, I was. Do you, us, do you remember that moment? Was that like, is oh, that really special? Absolutely. Like your heart started we were beating, I'm looking, guessing? Or? We were looking at each other and I was like, what are you thinking? You know? But and then you try to conceal it to, to keep your toughness? <laughs> sure, sure. <laughs> so you're like, mm, A little not bit, you know, I had to play, you know, keep some of my cards to myself. But um, for the most part, I think like when you see certain things happen, like certain steps or people you meet unfolding, you kind of have to go with that, right. that intuition. And we, so many doors were opening up to us, so that was a big one. And we, we went for it, we started working with him. That's sweet, okay. So I, you know what, I think we'd, we could do a boogie. Bo uh, oh, uh, give boogie. us a little bit better like Boogie that. time? <laughs> boogie. Okay, nobody will understand what that is, but that means, <laughs> that means we're gonna find out why all this stuff's in all front right. of us. So I, so I wanna talk about what makes you different from a lot of the other bars, mm -hmm. and it seems to be, I guess, these custom cocktails or craft Absolutely. cocktails. I don't know, I hear, I hear the word craft, mm -hmm. I hear the word, it just seems complicated, so just explain <laughs> it all to me. All right, so it was really important for us um, to use fresh ingredients, okay. um, make our own syrups, fresh juice every day. Um, that's very important for craft cocktails. You know, you go to a lot of bars and they'll have like pre-made sour mix and that's something we want to stay away from. Um, so we actually and what, what, what do you mean craft cocktails? It's just like, is that different sure. than just when they make a cocktail or like are um, you crafting it up? You're so like really, <laughs> you're a crafty person or like what's it? Well, sure, okay, so there's classic cocktails, um, like Old Fashioned was one of the first right. craft cocktails. Um, basically, um, a cocktail consists of sugar, bitters, um, a spirit, and juice usually. Mm. Um, so we actually make our own menu. Uh, it's roughly seasonal. This is our summer menu that is currently available. Guys and girls can order on this? Oh, of course. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, but look cool? They're unisex okay. cocktails. Okay, unisex. <laughs> okay, absolutely, good. absolutely. Yeah, I, had a, I had a whiskey sour incident, so I gotta get over that. So, so. I think, <laughs> well, you know, so the cocktail scene can be, um, you know, it can be comparable to like the culinary scene. You know, you okay. see all these cool things happening in restaurants, and you know, we have so many restaurants at our disposal, disposal at uh, in Las Vegas. So, cocktails in the same sense. So, fresh ingredients, great spirits. Um, so, I would love to make a snake doctor for you. Yeah, it sounds that great. That sounds good. Oh, right <laughs> in my alley. Yeah. It's a takeoff of a classic cocktail known as the Bee's Knees. Oh. All right. So. Uh, the main spirit in our snake doctor here is going to be gin. We're using bee feeder. Can you make these two, or is it only her? Oh, yeah. You guys both have the skill? Yeah, we okay. all collaborate for the menus. So mm, we each gotcha. come up with a couple and then um, get together as a group and discuss. So it's intense, make them. It's intense training if you want to work yeah, here? Yeah, it's fun. It takes right. about a month or so. Yeah, it's pretty fun. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. We, make, yeah. we tweak them a little bit, but. Some yeah. fresh lemon juice here. Okay, so we're looking at gin, the Snake Doctor, gin, raspberry, mm -hmm. lemon, sage, honey, and salt. Eight dollars. Yes. Okay. And do you ever have a happy hour or something? Yeah, we do a dollar off of everything. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> okay, so yeah, just so walk, walk me through what. All right. Uh, so I did um, an ounce and a half of beef theater gin. I did three quarters of an ounce of fresh lemon juice. Mm -hmm. I did an ounce of, uh, we made a sage honey uh, syrup with a little bit Ooh, of salt. I can smell that. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, I put in a fresh that's raspberry. The, that's, the, that's the secret ingredient, right? <laughs> <laughs> that mix? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I'll, we try to make as many in-house syrups as possible, um, which you can get really creative on. We're gonna just fill the shaker up with some ice. Give it a good shake. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's harder fitting, I think, probably. <laughs> nice and frosty. Thing, yeah. All right, on the tin. It's so intense. <laughs> then we're gonna Love strain it. it into a coupe. 
Got that There's nice the color there. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Fresh raspberry. <laughs> All right, and then we have a sage raspberry garnish. If you could see a little rabbit, if you will. Oh, that's awesome. Isn't that Cheers. Precious? <laughs> nice. Dylan, if All you right. will. <laughs> As the least qualified person for tasting this. <laughs> mm. Five stars. Yeah. All right. I like it. <laughs> All right, well, thank you guys right. so much for coming out. I appreciate it. So you guys, um, we can follow you on Twitter. You had velveteen underscore bar, mm -hmm. but you said Facebook's kind of the big thing, right? Like it's instead of website, website, and you're uh, velveteen rabbit lv. So facebook.com mm -hmm. forward slash velveteen rabbit lv. And then um, the, one of the things I want to say, so anybody here in the audience, if you guys want to know how to make these drinks, you guys are doing a mixology class. Just Absolutely. touch on that before we send off. Yeah, we've Mine, been doing. Oh, no. oh, okay. <laughs> Drink it. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we've been doing. We've been hosting some mixology classes, um, a lot of bachelorette parties, corporate events, team building, or if you're interested in learning about mixology, yeah, we are hosting a lot of those events. So please email us at velveteenrabbitlv at gmail .com. Okay. All right. Well, thank you, Pamela, Christina. Thank you guys for coming thank out. You. I appreciate thank it. You. Thank you for having me. You guys, us. check out the Velveteen Rabbit, and I appreciate thank it. You.